Archie, first of all, uh, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, I, I want to know from your perspective, how secure or vulnerable uh, are the sites that are powered by a WordPress? So surprisingly, they're very, very secure, right? They're, they're, they're doing the best that they can. Um, you know, uh, that being said, we do have a lot of code injection attacks happening almost every week, uh, but, but it's a systemic problem and it's not a WordPress problem. So I want to be clear, the, the space that WordPress owns on a website, the, the area that it plays in, it, it does a very good job of, uh, of protecting you. You talked about, uh, you know, code injection. Talk about that a bit, that what real threats are there? Yeah, so, so what code injection really means is, um, you know, WordPress has code and it's all PHP and it's all, it's all shipped in pure source code, right? So when you're running your website, all your plugins, your WordPress, your themes, everything, all the source code is on the production server at all times. What code injection simply means is code that you don't want running is now able to run and it can run through a variety of ways. Um, people can upload a, an image, a JPEG that actually contains PHP inside and your web server can see the PHP header and say, hey, even if the extension is JPEG, I'm going to execute this because I'm going to be helpful. Or you can have an eval where uh, a, a URL parameter or some a form post comes in and you just, uh, it concatenates into a string and then it gets evaled much like SQL injection. And so in short, code injection is any code that you don't want, that you did not approve is now running. Excellent for explaining that. Now, uh, how to protect your site against that? So to solve this problem, there's a, there's a couple of different things that we, that we as in the industry have, have looked at, right? Um, the most prominent one would be code signing where you sign a bunch of code and you say, this is the code that I approve. And if you didn't sign it, I'm not going to run it. For whatever reasons, for, for many reasons, technical reasons, um, code signing is not widely deployed or widely um, effective. And that's it's just cumbersome, not impossible. It's not wrong. It's just, is it pragmatically useful? Not today. Uh, what we do about it is um, we basically say, hey, if we can just change the programming language entirely, right? So, so I always like to use the, the example of like a chef who is communicating their secret recipe to their franchises. And you can communicate the recipe in English and then people can just modify it, steal it, whatever. Um, but if you, if you just use a new language every day, you, you use Italian and French and Swahili, and each day you're using a different language to share that recipe, um, you know, of course, you need highly educated chefs um, reading it, but you protect it. So we do the exact same thing for WordPress. Right before WordPress starts, we produce a brand new programming language that's based on PHP, but it's not PHP. And this new language can no longer understand regular PHP. We then take all of your code that you said, this is the approved code. We transform all of that code into a new language, and then we run it. Now it has no performance impact, there's no problem, right? Everything runs exactly as it should, but unwanted code, whether it's through eval, through an injection, through uh, a file upload, doesn't matter. I don't speak PHP anymore, right? And so that's how you catch it, you trap it, you stop it just unilaterally. What is polyscripting for WordPress and how does it work? So polyscripting is, is, is an overall technology that we developed and, uh, and we're patenting as we speak. Uh, and what it really does is it changes programming languages uh, dynamically. So all interpreted languages along with all code that speaks those languages. And the holy grail for us is SQL, obviously, but we're, we're a couple of years away from getting there. So as a technology, we... We do polyscripting for, uh, you know, AWS Lambdas and Node.js, and we're even bringing it to the browser as we speak. Uh, and this is intended to prevent unwanted code from executing by changing the language. For WordPress specifically, it, it's it's a it's a package solution. And so, how we how it works is um, at the base layer, we provide. Uh, it's very simple, really. It, it's, you know, today we ship it as a Docker container. We can run in the VM. 
uh, we have some core infrastructure that can flip or you know change PHP. Uh, and then what happens is you just use WordPress as you do. And then when you're ready, when you're when you're ready to lock it down, you press a little button on the WordPress UI and you say polyscript this. And you press this button and everything behind the scenes gets transformed. And now regular PHP is no longer valid. And if you want to make changes, updates, you just say unpolyscript this, and then it just goes backwards 100%. Or you can repolyscript and you can say, hey, someone just stole one of my files. They probably know this new language over time. Just go ahead and do it again. And that's how it really works. And I do want to call out that your original PHP code is 100% untouched. Like there is no change to that. So like there is no loss of code. There is not. So if polyscripting fails, if we screw up, nothing's lost. Who is your target audience here? Are, are, are these independent bloggers who run WordPress or are these companies? Talk about that. Our ideal target audience is um, is uh, self-hosted WordPress people, right? Running very large websites that they self-host because they have to be large scale, highly available. I don't know if you knew this, but about 28% of all internet transactions happen through WooCommerce, the WordPress e-commerce plugin, right? Literally a quarter of the internet's online banking, uh, not banking, but financial uh, transactions happen on WordPress. It's a big deal. And so for all of those people, um, you know, they, they are our primary audience to, to sort of take out this attack vector just 100% and make sure that um, it's no longer applicable. Our other audience is also uh, uh, professional services providers who, who get asked constantly by their customers who say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to get hacked. What can you do about this? Like, and, and you know, customers don't want to hear tolerances, right? Like customers don't want to hear, you know, like, 98% of the time serve it like, you know, uh, with one Sigma accuracy, whatever. Customers just want like a, a, a paintbrush. And it's like, you know, paint over this and make it go away. And so that's what we bring to those um, to those professional service providers. Okay, so does it also is include those web hosting provider, providers like Linode is one of them. They also offer self-hosting versus they also offer WordPress as one of the, do, is it for them also? Yes, yes, it, it's absolutely Perfect. for 100% of the WordPress audience, um, just, just to be clear. With the hosting providers, they, you know, we talk to them and so, what I mean by that is like one of my personal core principles is consumers should never, ever worry about security. They should just get it. So, no, my the reason I was asking was that, you know, depending on who your target audience is, like if you're talking about web hosting providers or the company service providers, they do have the capabilities. So it also depends on what kind of business model you have, you know, how you are offering your service to the customer. Can you talk about that piece? So it's very simple. Uh, we provide a license to our technology and um, and we, we just basically license it uh, per site. And then of course, for, for a large scale hosting, it would just be like a, a small flat fee that just applies to a whole domain or for hosting providers, it's again like just a, a B2B license where just, hey, bring it to all of your people. So let's say I run my site on WordPress. How do I get it? If you if you self-host, uh, then we then we basically just work with you to install it. It takes about five minutes. We we change out, um, we install some uh, we install some scripts, just some shell scripts, and all of this code is open, by the way, right? Like we we share everything with you. Uh, and we just install those things a little bit. There's a document that walks you through it. Takes about 10 to 15 minutes. And then and then you, you install a plugin to enable and disable polyscripting. And so that's all entirely a WordPress console provided. But we do need to get on the underlying OS so that we can control the PHP and make sure. So the, the key thing is not to just scramble the PHP, right? It's to make sure that the old PHP interpreter cannot exist. If it exists, then then you can run old PHP code. Now, if you look at WordPress, I mean, if you go to the WordPress market space, there are thousands, oh, I wouldn't say million, but thousands of plugins. So don't you think there is already something similar already for WordPress security? So no, uh, and, and and the reason is, is, uh, is like, I'll go at it in two different ways, right? One is the data just doesn't prove it, right? Uh, you know, like, and and by data, I mean, like, let's ask for insurance, right? If I, 
if I wanted to say, I don't want any code injection ever working on, on my website, can I pay someone and can they basically say, yep, since, since you've installed my plugin, I can assure you of that. And so not only does that data not prove it, but every single week we have a new code injection problem that shows up. Uh, what actually motivated us was the big Drupal problem from about a couple of years ago, I think early 2018. Um, and then and then the second part is just technical, right? Which is, um, which is you, you, because it's PHP code, uh, there is no way to look at a piece of code and say whether it's approved or good code and unapproved or bad code. That just, that's just a Turing complete problem. We can't solve it. WordPress has been around for a long time. It has its own problem. It has been solving their problem. Why do you suddenly think that WordPress needs this solution? What changed why you felt the need of bringing polyscripting to WordPress? That's a, that's a really good one because, uh, because the company philosophy for us is uh, how, how we actually go about doing it is we look at, so our mission is to solve cybersecurity. Right? It is to look at a problem and say, what can someone just do and then make the problem not exist? Not, not kind of sort of reduce it, but just make it completely go away. And then we look at statistics oh, yeah. every year and we look at like, hey, what are the top attack vectors? Now, when we started, memory-based problems were the top attack vector, right? So then we created polymorphing for Linux and we, you know, that's a product line that's going to be about two or three different product lines with, with extreme sophistication for blind drop and jit drop and various other things, right? Then we looked at, hey, what's the number two? And it was code injection. So we said, okay, we're just gonna go solve code injection. And how can we come up with a systemic way that code injection, the problem, not for WordPress, not for Lambda, not for Node.js, but what is a, a uniform way of just taking it away from all of these? And so thus came polyscripting. And to track that forward, the current top uh, problem is XSS. And it bypassed memory protection, uh, memory problems in 2019, at the end of 2019. And so as you might imagine, all of our resources right now are going on to um, go tackle that. Since you are trying to make all these problems go away uh, in terms of cybersecurity, you have tackled Linux. You have tackled WordPress, two big players in the in the you know in, in the web interface, uh, web world. Are you going to move forward and offer it to like Drupal, Joomla, and all our CMS? Plus, there are a lot of headless CMSs. I mean, there are so many things. So the the the, the question that uh, I have for you is, I know you may not be able to share uh, your roadmap from from product announcement perspective, but is that what it looks like? That's exactly what it looks like. So, so polyscripting for PHP basically does solve Drupal, right? But, um, but as we spoke about uh, with that experience, that packaging, that solution, uh, we, we picked WordPress first. Uh, but if anyone who is watching and if they want to do this for Drupal, the, the code is ready and it works. We just... That, that beautiful packaging, as, as everyone who's written a program knows, right? The 90% the, the is 10% is, uh, effort, right? The, the documentation, the packaging, the screenshots, the working with people, the support, the help, the you know, troubleshooting, all of that takes a lot of energy. And so, and so for Drupal is going to be absolutely next. Uh, and then headless CMSs, so we're going, we're solving Node.js, uh, we're solving uh, lambdas with Node.js as a as a first shot because it's simpler, uh, it's more packaged, more modern. But we do want to go after all Node.js websites and take away um, JavaScript code injections as well. Uh, Archie, thank you so much. Not only for explaining uh, polyscripting for WordPress, but also trying to you know uh, make us aware of the challenges that are there for everybody who's running their website and kind of offering a solution which is so easy that you don't have to be a developer or, or expert or techie because that's what happens with more most. WordPress uh, users, you mentioned WooCommerce, mostly you know, they're individuals who just want to run their business. They, they are not techies. They just want to be online and be able to sell their products or whatever it is. So it, it, making it easy for them and also making their uh, products secure is, is, is a very good you know, effort there. Uh, thanks for talking to me and I look forward to talk to you again because I do see you have a very exciting pipeline up ahead. Thank you for having me. Uh, this has been incredibly fun.